Hello you lot, how is it bloody well going? I hope you're absolutely fine and absolutely dandy, just as you should be. You're probably thinking, what earth am I even looking at? Well, what you're looking at, that's a wall right there. And you see that wall, that's the wall which is usually behind you. Um, whenever you're on the tripod there and we're looking at an RC car, doing a bit of will it what, will it one? Will it run or anything like that? That wall is normally behind you or possibly to the side, depending if I'm on that uh, table or on the bench behind me. That's the bench there. So it could be beside you. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, it's been there. Well, this actual shed that we're actually in has been here for 70 years. 70, seven zero years or thereabouts, give or take a year or two. But around about 15 years ago, 15 or so years ago, um, we replaced that wall. It used to be concrete, like the end slab there. It used to be concrete slabs, um, but they were a little bit topsy-turvy because the ground had sunk. So we knocked that down and obviously the back of the shed and replaced it with a wooden frame one. And it's been there for 15 years, no problem whatsoever. Hasn't leaked, hasn't done a single thing. Around about, yeah, it must be more than 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, um, I decided to put some boards on here. I had a load of insulation left over. Here is said fiberglass insulation and a bit of polystyrene as well. I had this left over because we built some uh, a conservatory in that and I insulated all the bottom of the conservatory. Um, and this is what was left over. So I thought, let's make use of it and I'll insulate the, uh, the shed. So this is what was in there. That's part of one of the bones that was in there. And I noticed, well, I've had a bit of a problem with leaking, water leaking now for about a year. Um, I've been trying to mend that, but also when I was looking for a leak, I noticed that this wood, there was two bones. It's actually full of woodworm. Um, let me see if I can, well, you might be able to see the little holes there. All right, and you can probably see the little holes there. Look. Loads of woodworm come from God knows where. I mean, that board's have been on there for 10 or so years. Anyway, the whole lot's riddled with it. More so at the bottom, not the top. I think that was the top of the board. The other one is quite bad as well. So, of course, I thought to myself, no, I've got to get rid of that. I don't want to, I could treat it. And I've been having a look at the frame. And uh, that's not woodworm, that's where a screw went in. There doesn't appear to be, at least at what I can see, I know it looks wet. That's because that's where this, this is the outside wall as well. It's just a board. It was leaking at one point, um, but I've now fixed that on the outside temporarily, well, temporarily, permanently, you know what I mean? So it's not actually wet anymore. It just got stained. Um, and it's a little bit rotten as well, a little bit moldy because the insulation had held the moisture. Um, but there doesn't appear to be any woodworm that I can see in the frame to the shed. So that's good. That's what I wanted to avoid because I didn't want to have to rebuild this all over again with new wood. Because woodworm, in case you don't know, it will gradually eat away at the wood. You know if you've got woodworm because you get little piles of shaving, fine powder wood, just appear on the floor or wherever the wood is. And uh, you think to yourself, what's that all about? That's woodworm. It eats it up, gnaws it all up, and uh, eventually, if woodworm got in this frame, it would eat it all up, and it would just be, it would just fall apart, you know. But before it falls apart, it would actually fall down because this is this is all load bearing, these struts or whatever you want to call them, they're load bearing, so they would fall down before they crumbled apart. But anyway, I don't want woodworm, so luckily it hasn't gone in there. So. And obviously the insulation is still a little bit of a little bit of it over there, <coughs> a little bit down there. That's some of the polystyrene stuff I had left over as well. So that was a bit of that stuff in there. Um, so I'm thinking now I'm probably going to clean all of this up. I'm probably I don't really know yet. I'm probably just going to paint it. Um, and maybe when I've fixed this wall properly um, and I actually made it actually properly waterproof because at the moment all I've done on the outside of it I've literally just stuck a plastic waterproof membrane I've super glued well not super glued but I've glued 
a plastic membrane on the outside of this wall and I've made it all waterproof around the edges um, as well to try and stop the leakage for now um, just to get me through the winter it's probably a bit more permanent it depends it all depends how things go if I can afford to do a proper render because the rest of this shed on the outside is rendered yeah it was cement it's got um, a mesh stapled to it and then we rendered it with proper render the only wall I didn't do is that one because this shed here next next to it is actually next door's one as well and the gap between it is just I can just about squeeze through it sideways and be like that so I haven't we didn't do that wall um, so I think what we'll probably do I'll try if I can afford to in the summer is render that wall on the outside and then it's done then it's waterproof and then what I can do is re-insulate it there's no point in get buying a whole load more new insulation putting it in here buying new boards without woodworm and putting them on the top of it if it's still going to be leaking from the outside because it will have a similar problem where the insulation will get wet the wood will go rotten so we don't want that so for now the best option for me is to just leave this open it can stay dry i can monitor it i can look at it if it's leaking i can address the leak but it also it keeps it dry and open so this should all stay dry it is dry now it's not wet it just looks wet but if i ever get a leak it won't stay wet so i think that's probably what i'm going to do with a temporary measure yeah lovely transmitters up there as well bloody hell i thought that shelf was going to come down but it didn't still stay there look. there was mice living in this insulation as well before i got rid of them though in the summer they'd found their way up the back of the wall and was living inside the fiberglass quite they must have had itchy eyes i've also got her address the reason why I've had a lot of water or it started puddling here about a year ago. Um, started puddling here, and there's actually a worm down there. Look, see that worm? We had rain yesterday, and I was in here watching it. And that worm now, a worm shouldn't really be inside. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, if a worm is inside on the floor, that means there's a hole in the floor because a worm isn't going to climb up. And come through a hole in a wall or a crack or something is it a worm isn't the worm is going to come up through the ground or if there's like a hole in the side of the brick there or something the worm might get flooded if the water rises and then flood in perhaps but there must be a hole in the ground over there and that looks wet there as well and that was another problem i had was flooding here um so we're going to have to address that i'm going to have to move that leg this is my trusty bench that we all see where the nitro cars are at the moment it's just full of stuff um, but this is the leg to it so I think what I might do is screw that bench to that wall there and then try and bend that leg out of the way and then we can have a look in there and if needs be I might have to take that board off so we can get to this wall here and see what's going on because that really does need to be addressed can't be having any leakages but this has happened um, ever since because what happened was alongside there on the outside is a nice soak away and my neighbor decided to put concrete on it because he wanted it to look nice which is fair enough you know everybody wants things to look nice but as a result of that the water can't drain away and what's happened is it started to find all the little ways to get into here up through the bricks somehow um, it's been here a long time it's been here 15 or so years i suppose I've tried filling it with concrete. So anyway, that's what, that's how I noticed the woodworm because I was looking at a puddle that was there and another puddle that was there. So now I noticed the woodworm. So what I was initially trying to do was just find out where that water's coming from. That's turned into a full scale wall dismantling operation. But there we go. So I'm gonna get a bit of a clean up, get the old hoover out, hoover up all of this and uh, I haven't got any paint at the moment, but I'll get some and have a look at that. But I need to find out what that hole is all about. And I dare say some of you are thinking, why on earth are you showing us this? This is an RC channel for RC cars. I know that, but this is where I usually am when you see me messing around with RC cars. So I thought, a bit of a change of pace. Let's have a look at some of the other stuff that comes along with it, because you've got RC cars. You've got to have somewhere to put them, somewhere to work on them. Some of you are lucky enough you're lucky and some people would say well i'd rather be outside in a shed well i'm, I'm i'd rather be inside 
you know, some of you are lucky where you've got a house which has got a nice spare room, and you know you can have all your RC stuff in your spare room inside your nice, warm, comfortable house with all your family. You know, you can just walk out of the room and there's your family. You know, but um, I've got a shed. So with my shed, I obviously have to look after my shed because if my shed falls apart, I've got nowhere to put my RC cars and I've got nowhere to make videos for you lot and I've got nowhere to do anything. So it comes along with it, you've got to look after your buildings and things. So anyway, let's stop talking crap <laughs> and uh, have a little bit of a clean up and see what we can find. There's a bloody massive spider down there. It was there yesterday. I thought it was, uh, well, no, it was alive. But um, I, it was crawling around and it wouldn't go up my leg and I thought I'd have a new crawl around. Um, so I sprayed some stuff at it and I thought I missed it. But um, today when I came in here, it's, it's like that. So obviously I didn't miss it. Either that or he had enough and thought, bloody hell, it's a nightmare living in here. I'm going to have that. Big old thing though. Well, it's actually not big. Some of you, lot, some of you lot that live in Australia and South Africa and other parts of America, where you get spiders that are probably the whole width of that and the height down to that line. Now, you're probably thinking that little thing's not big at all. Look at the size of that thing on the wall over there, or something. But for me, that's a big spider. Well, it's a whole lot cleaner than it was. Now I need to go over it with a brush get rid of some of the bits that are stuck in the corners and that and uh, that'll be good enough for painting and I'll need a few coats to get rid of the stains I want it to look good if I'm going to paint it <clears throat> I like the wood colour I love the colour of wood and I'd love to just leave it I know some of you are going to say we'll get a clear coat then just get a clear coat a sealer and seal it but um, I think I'm, I'll just paint it a colour probably white or something like that make it brighter in here anyway won't it and anyway, a clear coat will just keep it like that and it'll look all tatty. Anyway, you can see where I've gone along here in the past with just cement, literally no ballast, just cement and water to try and seal up any way that, because bricks can become porous, the mortar can crack and that could become porous, which could cause the water to leak in. So I've gone along here a long time ago now, um, a few months ago, with a load of cement and filled in all the cracks. There was a few cracks in the ground, but there was a puddle forming there. And the, I was watching it for about half an hour while it was heavily raining outside. And it had formed there and it was running this way. And it stopped about there. But I couldn't, it was literally a puddle in the middle of nowhere. Like there was no, nothing was dripping from the ceiling. There was no water along the edge, no water here, no water further behind here, because this usually lives there. It was just a puddle there. So I reckon that um, this concrete ground, this concrete floor, which is, we put here 15 years ago, has become porous and the water's coming up through the ground. So just to see what I can do, I've got some of this laying around. I've got a little bit left in the bottom there because I used it to seal up all the bricks all around the edge of the whole shed um, because just to make sure they weren't porous. I've had a few coats of this stuff. Um, it's probably arguable whether this particular brand is any good or not. Some of you are going to say that's rubbish. Some of you are going to say that's good. I don't really care. I'm not really interested in that in the slightest because you get that with every single product. This was just one that I bought. I've got a little bit left. So I'm going to put it on that floor there just to try and seal that up just in case it has gone a bit porous. Um, we've had several different paints on this ground, on this floor over the years. Because years ago, back when I was a... Yeah, I would have been a teenager. I would have been a teenager. Um, about 19 or so years old. I had a BMW E36 in here. And me and a couple of friends, <coughs> we used to work on it because it was our little drift car. We did a bit of drifting. And uh, so we painted the floor grey. Um, and we just had a few tools in here. And literally we just pulled it out on the drive down again. Worked on it. Done stuff to the engine. The diff, welded the diff up. All that kind of stuff was done here. Um... And obviously then we grew up, I grew up, I got married, etc. And they deserted me and never see that car ever again, unfortunately. But that's why we painted the floor grey. Because we thought, why not? It would be cool, have a, a grey floor. So that's what I've done. And I've done it again a little while later because it started to, because we didn't seal it first. Big mistake. 
always seal the concrete, seal it up before you paint it. When it's when it's concrete like this, cement concrete, whatever you want to call it, because it will just it will crumble and it will fall off. I didn't seal it first; we just painted it. So obviously, then it all peeled up. But then I decided just to paint over that because I'm good at bodging. That's what I do. I'm a, I'm a bodge, bodger and badger, bodger and badger, bodger and badger. All right, you lot. Now no wonder there was a great big leak. Look at that. Look at the size of that crack in that brick. Uh, that's in the brick hole. I think it's in the mortar and the brick, isn't it? That goes right there. That leg was there. I've bent the leg out of the way for now. It's the leg of the bench. Screwed it to the wall there so it won't fall down. Bent the leg out of the way. So that means now oh, I'm going to have to take all those screws out and take that whole board away so that I can see what's going on and how far it goes that way and uh, put a load of cement hold in there and that should hopefully seal that up but now I know how the worm got in I told you a worm will only get in from the floor worms can't fly worms can't climb so the worm came in from that little gap Look at that spider hole, oh, they're bloody everywhere. That, look at all the eggs, spider eggs, all over the place. Anyway, let's get this done then, shall we? Oh, that one. That one. Yeah, oh my giddy on. what's going on here? Oh, I don't know. Right, so rather typical. Rather typically, it's been raining all night. It's been a couple of days since I first started doing this. I've been, everything's happening at once, as usual. So I've had to sort of leave this and come back to it, blah, blah, blah. Stuff everywhere. I haven't been able to do anything related to RC or anything in general because it just can't get anywhere because everything's out. Even the trusty bench has been moved away from the wall because I need to be able to get to that crack. Anyway, it's been raining all night. I haven't had a look. I've had to move that socket, so I've had to turn the electric off to the sockets. Get the lights on, but not the sockets. So I've had to move that socket. You've got this sheet coming out. Now it's been raining all night. Hopefully, good, good, good. I was a bit concerned that we might have another flood here. It would be just more pains <coughs> to deal with. <laughs> Now, believe it or not, you see that hole in that plasterboard down there? Let me uh, zoom in a little bit. There's a hole in the plasterboard there. That was caused by a spider. And there's another spider in there. You won't believe me, but a spider was going in and out of there for ages until I got rid of it. So spiders do, da do a bit of damage. Anyway, in order to... That crack, you probably can't see. But there is a crack in the brickwork, in the mortar, and it goes up like an L to the left. It goes behind that piece of wood down there. Um, in order to get to that, obviously I'd have to take that whole section of wood out, wall. Now behind here, it's just a, this is a plasterboard wall. And behind here is just a little room. It's got a chest freezer in it. But it would be a bit of a nuisance to remove this whole wall. <laughs> <clears throat> um, bolted into the ground and all sorts. So what I'm going to do, mix up a wet mix of cement, pour it down there and hope that it flows into the cracks. And then we can put everything back together. And uh, I just want to get everything back. I hate disruption, really. I mean, sometimes it has to be done, but this is just a bloody pain in the bottom, to say the very least. Anyway, let's go, shall we? before the rain happens even more. I couldn't find any buckets that I wanted to sacrifice to cement, so I found this old screen wash thing that I've been using it for water. And handily enough, it's got some water in it. So I'll just cut the top off of it. Like that. Ah, there we go. That's our little tub of water. And also, I've got a little built-in scoop now. 
with my cement, complete with a snail as well. Look, <laughs> a bit of cement should be all right. It's been sitting behind the shed now for a while, but it's still soft, so it's not. Oh, what's that? Come on, there's a scoop in there. Look, it's, <laughs> it's rock solid. Oh, well. Get some cement, put that in there. I want quite a wet mix. I want it to, I want it to go down, I want it to flow in the cracks. So uh, <clears throat> I'll put, I'll put three scoops in and see how we end up. We might need a bit more, but we'll see. We'll just go and get the mixer. Alright, so the mixer is a little thing in the end of a drill here. Oh, fuck. too wet. So I need to put see look it's just basically water in there. It's not really so far more cement. Far more. Keep it coming. More more more. I want it wet enough so it flow down at the cracks when I pour it in. Now I couldn't fit both of us in there so I had to do it and I'm showing you now but that's certainly not going to be leaking through that crack again but the problem is the concern that I've got is how far does that crack go through there I don't think I can see it on the other side but what if I filled in this part of the crack but there's another part underneath this section of wood here and the water keeps coming in going underneath this wood I'm going to have an ongoing problem with this wood water coming in but also the wood going rotten but there's not a lot i can do about it i'm not going to be taking this frame out i'm just not this will have to go rotten and it will have to fall apart before i replace it with a new one i'm not going to take all this out i've got far too much other stuff to be doing um at the moment it's just this just needs to be repaired the best i can get it to be repaired and then it's going to have to all go back together and just leave it it's a shed after all if this was my house it'd be different I know I do live in here, it's just a shed. It can be easily repaired, whereas an actual house is a lot more difficult to actually renew. <clears throat> so, let's have a little quick look on the other side of it. I don't, I'll put the skirting board back now, but hopefully there's no water on the other side and you'll see what I've had to do there. But that crack's certainly filled in. There's not going to be any more worms coming in there. And I even filled in the spider hole as well. You've got no electric here because the bloody plug sockets are off. Um, right, so this is this is just this is just behind that wall. That's the wall we were just looking at, and this is what's behind it. It's just a chest freezer and a couple of chairs. Basically, just where I keep the deck chairs and a chest freezer for food and stuff. Uh, so uh, there's no water behind here, luckily, which is good. We'll see how I move the freezer out. I put a skirting board around here because. Well, I wanted to try and make it a nice little room sort of thing, like a little shed room. I thought it would be quite nice. So, but I had to remove the skirting board when the leak first started to happen because it was starting to go rotten. Mm, that was a dead spider down there. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, so there's no water this side. I've already put a load of cement all the way along the bottom of the bricks. I thought it was coming in underneath the bricks. Now, I know some of you are going to be asking the question, why don't you just repair it from the outside? Well, let me explain. But I reckon that'll be that. I'm not going to go no further with that. I reckon that's going to be fine now. Hopefully. So, why don't I just repair it from the outside? Well, 
I might show you later on if I can if I can get out there. But this is two quarters of bricks. Obviously, that one there's ground level. Um, now outside, the, there's a layer of concrete, and it goes to pretty much that layer of mortar there. That, that the top of the first course of bricks is the top of the concrete that my neighbour put in. So I can't obviously get to the bottom course of bricks because they're under concrete. Now the concrete is only about that thick because underneath that he put a little bit of shingle and he put holes in the concrete and he wanted it to drain away which is why I get worms and mud coming through the crack which is there coming in through the crack because it's not thick slab of concrete like that thick it's just a thin slab of concrete shingle and then obviously mud at the bottom and underneath that is a soak away that goes the whole length of the shed to one end to the other but obviously that's been now covered up <clears throat> um so yeah i can't get to that course of bricks and obviously the cracks behind this board but the crack went up the mortar didn't it and then it went like that so i can't get to the crack to repair it from the outside because i've got a slab of concrete on top and i wish i could break that up blah 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 so the best way to do it the only way really is from the inside so i've stuffed as much cement in the crack as i possibly can filled it all up on the outside and hope that that is it and there's no more and that should be the end of the leak well i think what i'm going to do there's no way that's going to be leaking there look all that i'm going to put this sheet back in there while that's still wet and then that will cement everything in place this board will be, don't forget, if I want to take this out in the future, I can just cut the board. The board will be cemented in, everything will be in. That means I can put my sockets back, I can put everything back, I can put my bench back. And I can bloody start to get things back. Start to get things back on track and get on with the stuff that I've had to, that i got to do, which is quite important. It's always the way. Whenever you've got something, that's, when you've got nothing to do and you're just sort of milling around, finding things to do, just having a good time, nothing important comes up. As soon as something important comes up that you've got to do, all these other things happen, and you're like, ah, oh, if I ignore that, that's going to get worse. But then I need to do this important thing. But then if I ignore the important thing, that's going to get really, really bad. But then if I ignore the other thing, and then something else comes up, and you're like, well, if I ignore both of these things that aren't quite as important, but they're going to get bad, and then they're going to get really important, and then I'm going to have more important things. It's so mad. It's really mad. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put this, put this um, sheet of plier back in place blah 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 put the bench back try to get some sort of order where we are because at the moment it's a complete mess look i've got welders in places where i can't even get through look what the bloody hell is going on and then a the bench and then ugh. hello silver nine how are you today yeah good thank you very much indeed all right we're getting somewhere now bench is back in and i put it in while it was wet obviously so i put that leg there that would be cemented in place screwed it all back to the wall happy days shelves back up propped up by my cup brick and a bit of wood and a bit of wood there it's all propped up nicely um this leg's a little bit this leg got a little bit bent push that back in place there we go that's that, that, that lovely that's my bench done now i just got to put everything back um there's a bit of a hole down now so i think what i might do i've got a little bit of cement left over so i'm going to put that in that dip to make that all flat again um and that'll, that'll use all that hopefully that won't be leaking anymore really what i need to do is get rid of that leg so i can see if the crack comes back but nah well you lot that's pretty much back and it's somewhat resembling the bench that it did before I've got my charger there and i put it all back in place so and i've just got stuff to sort out while i'm at it i'm going to sort out some bits and bobs have a little bit of a tidy up because things will accumulate you know how it goes i've put the rest of that cement down there because the ground must have sunk a little bit on this new slab that we put in and there was a bit of a dip here so i've literally just put the rest of my cement in there and just filled that hole in it's not perfect doesn't matter because this cabinet is going over there anyway and in the next couple of days once that's all dried i do think that the water was coming up through that anyway so hopefully we won't have any more water coming one thing i've got to say i've mentioned before that the reason that i get a bit of a flood is because my next door neighbor decided to put a bit of concrete there and it, it, 
I don't want you lot to think it's not his fault. Everybody makes mistakes. And all he's done is he just wanted to make it look nice and put, put some concrete there. It was a mistake. So I understand that. We all understand that. He's a nice bloke. We all just hope to get along. So don't want anybody thinking that it's he done it in malicious manner because I don't think that was the case at all. It's just unfortunate for me now that I can't repair my brickwork from the outside, which is a good way of doing it, stop the water getting in rather than let it get in a bit and then not go any further. I'd rather repair it from the outside, but it is what it is. I could go out there and break up the concrete. If we continue to get leaks, I will have to repair it properly. And I know there's some of you lot out there that would, you probably wouldn't agree with my bodge up repair. You would just literally rip that wall out. You would go outside, break up the concrete, repair the brickwork properly, put the wall back in with a new, with new bits or whatever. And do, but I haven't got time for that and I haven't, it's just not worth it for me. It's a shed at the end of the day. Um, so there we go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you lot on the next one. We should have a little bit of RC stuff in the next video, hopefully. If I get everything back together um, my, and it stops raining, I might go out tomorrow and have a little bit of a, I don't know what it will take. I haven't got anything left to test. I need to buy another project. The Thunder Tiger SSK is for sale as we speak. It's on eBay. The old Bay of Ease. It's on there at the moment. If anybody wants to buy it, they're more than welcome to buy it. Um, it's not here. It's at someone else's house at the moment because it's easier for me to do it from someone else's house uh, because if someone wants to collect it, they can collect it from their house. Um, well, I think it's just posted, actually. I think it has to be posted anyway, but they can send it off for me because I don't have time. I keep missing the bloody post office house. Um, and the Hyper 7, I've initiated a swap i'm doing a swap for it i'm not going to tell you what i'm swapping it for but i'm swapping it for something um channel member slash subscriber member has said look blah 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 and i said look let's do a swap what you got to swap and he's come back with something pretty cool and i'm pretty happy with that so we'll see there'll be an unboxing of the swap at some point soon so happy days i'll catch you lot on the next one love life enjoy yourselves and don't forget you're here to enjoy yourself so you might as well bloody well do it. <laughs> Cheerio, you lot. All the best.